The words of the Lord, man. You already read it. What did it say? What the Bible say? What are you talking about? Faith in what? All right, for who? Where does it say everybody at? I don't remember reading that. See that? That's wicked as hell. He just threw the fly away, man. But see, the Lord see that, man. You know what I'm saying? Our people are wicked, man. For no reason. That's crazy. But first and foremost, I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh. By Shimmy Yahweh Shah, man. That is to say all praise to the Heavenly Father, whom the world calls God. In the name of his only begotten son, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, man. Right? Hey, we the Hebrew Israelites, man. We come in week in and week out, man, to prophesy the downfall of this wicked kingdom, America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, man. And to raise up out of the dust, you so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans who lost your nationality a long time ago, man, due to you falling away from the most high sins. Because according to the Bible, you are the true children of Israel, man. Right? God's chosen people, man. And it's time to come back to the Lord in these last days, man. And because we got we got to turn back the hands of time, man, and get back to the state of being kings and princesses, man, and rulers, man. Rulers on the earth, right? Because that's what the Lord said is going to happen in the future, man, as long as we come back to his laws, that's his commandments, man. Right? Give me that in Revelation 10 and 5 real quick. Right? Oh, uh, yeah. Give me that real quick. Ah, yeah. Five and ten. Just lock it. Read. This is the book of Revelation, chapter five and verse ten. Right. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. Right. And we shall reign on the earth. We shall what? And we shall reign on the earth. Right. And that's what we're trying to get back to, man. To reign righteously on the earth, man. Right. There's a prayer, right? Give me Matthew six real quick. Right. There's a prayer that is known that you have been saying from the time you were five years old into present times, man. And you really didn't understand what that prayer was. You just understand that it was the prayer of the Most High God, right? Right? The Lord's prayer is what they call it, but you didn't really know what you was praying for, right? What's going on, young brothers? Y'all got a couple minutes to hear the words of the Lord? I'll praise the Most High, man. So, uh, what's your nationality, Kings? African American, y'all believe in the Bible? Y'all believe in God? Where in the Bible can you show me African American? Judah. Judah. Okay, that's beautiful. Beautiful. A Judite, right? That's what that would be your true nationality. You are from the tribe of Israel, the tribe of Judah. That's right. right? From the nation of Israel, rather, right? The same tribe that Christ come from, man. Did y'all know that Christ was a black man? You heard that before? All right, that's a beautiful thing, man. You know what I'm saying? And he come, he got the same blood as you. All right, give me Hebrews 7 and 14. Let me show you something real quick. Hebrews 7 and 14. All right. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. All right. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. See that? It's evident, man. Or it's a sure thing, right? That our Lord sprang out of Judah. The nation of Israel, man. And that's who you are, man. Right? So, remember coming up in the in the world, man, and they tell you in church, man, that God loves everybody. Y'all believe that? You believe that God loves everybody? What if I told you that God has a chosen people? Would you believe that? Yeah, you sure? You're kind of hesitant. Right? Give me Psalm 5 and 23. Right, so I write 5 and 23 real quick. Right, the Lord hasn't chosen everything, right? According to the bias of the world, they try to tell you that God loves everybody. We're all equal. It don't matter if you're black, white, blue, brown, or yellow, man. And God loves everybody equally. You know, we're all the same. We all read, bleed, red, and all this, et cetera, et cetera. But the Bible says something different, man. And we come out here to show, to tell the truth, right, of the Bible, man. Give me John 8 and 32 real quick. Hold that. Hold that. Give me John 8 and 32, man. Because this is what we were commissioned to do by the Lord in these last days is to wake up our people and give them the truth, man. Right? To set you free 
from the bondage that you were made to serve. Not only in the captivity of this land of America, but also in your minds, man, to free and liberate your minds, man, to show you that you're not just a nigga, you're not just black, colored, that you're God's chosen people. You're special in the sight of the Most High, man. Right, read that. It's the book of John, chapter 8 and verse 32. Right. And it reads, and ye shall know the truth. What the Lord say? And ye, ye shall, shall know, know the, the truth. truth. Right. And the truth shall make you free. You shall what? Shall, shall make, make you free. So the truth of the Bible is going to make you free, man. Right? And we got to know what the truth is, right? Give me the book of Psalms, chapter 119, 142. Right, read that. This is the book of 2nd Esther, chapter 5, and verse 23. Right. And said, O Lord, thou ruler from all the woods of the earth and all the trees thereof, Thou hast chosen thee one vineyard, right. and of all the lands of the whole world, thou hast chosen thee one cavern, and of all the flowers thereof, one lily, and of all the depths of the sea, thou hast filled thee one little brook, right. and of all the builded cities, thou hast hallowed Zion unto thyself. Right, so the Lord has a favorite of everything, right? He has a favorite tree, he has a favorite city, a favorite river, and a favorite land, right? So if the Most High can choose and have a favorite thing of everything, right, why can it be, uh, uh, why is it not that he has a favorite people, right? Why does everybody have to be equal? That's the question, right? Read on. Verse 27, and if out of all the multitudes of peoples, right. thou hast gathered unto thee one people, right. and unto this people whom thou loved, thou gavest a law that is approved of all. So who is the people that the Most High has chose and he gave a law to? Who is that people? Huh? Judah. Judah is one tribe, right? Judah is one tribe. He gave the law to Israel, right? Give me Psalms 119. I mean 147 to 19, right? I'm going to show you that real quick, right? Read the book of Psalms, chapter 147 and verse 19. Right. He showeth his word unto Jacob, right. his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Right. He had not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So he didn't give his laws and statutes and commandments or none of his judgments towards any other nation but Israel, man. Right? So we got to understand that the Most High never had equality in the earth. From the beginning of his creation, he did create all men, but he chose a certain people. Right? Give me Isaiah 44 and 1. Right? Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Come. On. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Right. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Right. Above all people, no, people too. Above, above all people, people right? that are upon the face of the earth. Right. So I keep showing you this, right, to give you the truth. And the truth is going to make you free. So anytime you hear somebody say we are all equal, it's all love, we all bleed the same, so on and so forth. You tell them that ain't according to the Bible. That's not according to the Most High God. He created 18 nations on the earth, but he chose one people to be his special people, right? Give me Isaiah 44 more. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, from the top. Yet now hear, O Jacob, right. my servant, right. and Israel, whom I have chosen. What did he say? Whom I have chosen. Right, so he chose Israel. And you are from the nation of Israel, from the tribe of Judah, man, right? So knowing that, and that you're special, man, right? That's only half the battle, just knowing who you are, right? Now there's something that's required of you. Right, read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. Right. And it reads, And now, O Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? Right. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, right. and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy soul, and with all thy heart, to keep the commandments of the Lord. To, what? to keep the, the commandments, commandments of the Lord. Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Right, so what does it mean to fear the Lord? Y'all know what it means to fear the Lord? No, I'm gonna show you real quick. 4 and 17. Uh, Salak, yeah. Uh, Salak, yeah. 
fear him, but take heed to the commandments. Sirach, chapter 17. Salak your brothers. One second. Take heed. Right. Salak. Okay, brother. Well, remember, y'all Israelites, okay? Y'all gotta repent and keep the commandments of the Most High God, man. Right? Do y'all know? Let me, let me get y'all two commandments, man, for y'all. Give me Numbers 15, 38, and give me uh, Leviticus 11. Right? Y'all eat pig, man? Y'all eat pork? Yo, you sit there with a smile on your face, man. You like that pork, that, that, that pepperoni and all that, huh? Right? Okay, read that. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. Right? And the swine. And the what? And the, the swine. Right? Though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. Right. Of their flesh shall you not eat. Right. Of their carcass shall you not touch. Right. They are unclean to you. So the Lord said that swine, that pork, that pepperoni, right, the pork chops, the chitlins and all that, that's unclean to you, man. Because they said that you are a holy people. You're separate and you're not supposed to partake of those things, right? Because when you eat those things, it causes certain diseases to come upon you. Because the, the pig is created to clean the filth of the land, right? right? He eats anything you put in his path. What, it don't matter what it is, feces, dead body, whatever it is, that pig is gonna clean it up, right? So when you eat that, you partake of those things that that pig is eating. That's why you get certain things like high blood pressure, hypertension, gout, heart attacks, cancers. All these things come from this meat. That's why the Lord said, don't do it. But this land is contrary to the most high, and it teaches you that you can do whatever you wanna do, man. That's right. But you are holy people. And the Lord said, you're separate, so you have to keep his commandments to show him that you love him, right? And to keep yourself healthy. The Lord, you think the Lord didn't know what his people should eat and he created you? You know what I'm saying? He's telling you that for a reason, to preserve your life, right? These things are abominable to him, man. Right? Y'all eat shrimp, crab, lobster, anything like that? Seafood? You like y'all from Louisiana? Well, I know y'all eating it then, huh? Read that. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 9. Right? These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Right. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So whatever comes out of the waters, it has to have fins and scales. So that means fish. You can only eat fish. You can't eat clams, shrimp, crab, lobster, things like that, because they don't have fins and scales. And they're bottom feeders. They do the same thing as the pig on the land. Everything that comes from the top and falls and filtrates to the bottom, they eat these things. They're made to clean the waters. That's right. That's why when you see the rivers, they so nasty and dirty and murky because those people take that stuff out of the waters in abundance and they put them on your plate, right? You're not supposed to eat those things, man. That stuff is causing you to die, right? So you got to get away from it. I'm going to give y'all one more. I'm going to let y'all go, right? Read that. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. Bring it out. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garment throughout their generations. Right, so these are fringes, brothers. The Lord said you have to put these on the borders of your garments, man, throughout your generations, meaning forever, right? And we're gonna tell you why, read. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders of a ribbon of blue. Right. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, right. that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and to do them. Amen. What? And, and to, to do, do them. them. Right, so this is a reason why we wear them is to remember the commandments of the Most High. There's over 600 commandments of the Most High God. You're going to find them in the Bible. The whole book is the book of the commandments, man. The only way you're going to learn them is getting into your Bible and read it, right? So this is a commandment of God that you got to start putting fringes on your clothes, man. Right? So remember, if you love God, keep his commandments, man. Right? So y'all gonna put that shrimp, crab, lobster, and pork away? You love God, right? It gonna take, it gonna take hey man, look. Give me some homes for 19 and 60. I'm gonna show you something, man. Give me uh, side right 75. Five, oh yeah, South Father 7. Right, read that. This is with the Psalm chapter 119 and verse 60. Right. Right, and it reads. It reads, I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. Lord said, I made haste, I hurried up to keep the Most High's commandments, man. 
you got to do it right away because you don't always have you don't you know you don't know if you're going to wake up tomorrow the lord might take you away from this earth tomorrow man you might walk around that corner man and get hit by a car or get shot or something you never know you got to make haste to turn your life around man to repent and return back into the commandments man you don't want to delay yourself right because you can be destroyed at any moment man right and i know it's a process to things but you don't want to have that mind process of a uh, uh, thought process of uh well i'll do it one of these days you know I, i'll put it away next week no you want to have that mindset okay i'm gonna try to do that now you might slip and make a mistake but let that all that be is a mistake right you have to repent and change from that man and get away from that man or the lord gonna put you to death the lord ain't a nice guy sitting up there putting rainbows in the sky just for you to marvel and say "Ooh, that's cool no the lord is he ain't hey, the Lord will kill you, man. Right. He ain't about them games, man. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, just take heed to that and know that the Lord ain't playing no games, man. You know what I'm saying? Right? Give me out there for this five and seven real quick. I know I'm going to let y'all go, but I know y'all in a hurry. Read that. It's the book of Sirach, chapter five and verse seven. Make no tearing to turn to the Lord. What the Lord say? Make, Make no tearing to, to turn to, to the, the Lord. Lord. And put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed. And that's what you don't want, man, because suddenly the wrath of God can come forth on you, man, when you're feeling like you're secure, you're taking a shower or watching a movie or something like that, man, and you kick back and you're chilling, you know what I'm saying? And then guess what? Something come upon you, man, a heart attack or anything, a stroke, you know, a bullet come through the window. You know, you never know, man. That's how the Lord get down, right? Right, read that. I'm gonna show you. This is Deuteronomy chapter 32. And uh 20 years. 39. Oh yeah, so like it. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. Bring it out. And it reads, See now that I, even I, am he, right. and there is no God with me. I kill what and I, I, I kill, kill and I make a lie. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Lord telling you, man, I can make you die. I can bring you back to life, right? I can wound you and I can heal you. Which one do you want? You want life? Life comes when you keep the commandments, man. Right? Life comes when you gotta keep the commandments, man. Right? So make that choice today, brothers, to change around, man, and repent, okay? Right? So get into that information, man. Tap in, watch the videos, man, and learn about your uh, your heritage, man. Right? And these commandments, man. Yeah, hook them up with the YouTube, okay? All uh, praise to the Most High, man. You know what I'm saying? Get y'all brothers built up, man, in the spirit, man. Right? These clowns, man. It's off, man. Right? And see, that's what you get when you got wicked people in authority man of this world man you get wicked goofy comic-con and and, and 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 uh costume parties and stuff man that that jake is taking part of too jake is coming and and and, and dressing up like blade and, and little princess and all right brothers y'all be safe and everything anything to please damn esau man you know give me uh um uh, psalms uh 29 uh, in two, all right? Psalms twenty nine and two, real quick. I right, read it. So Psalms chapter twenty nine and verse two. Bring it out. Give unto Yahweh the glory due unto I mean, His uh, name. Right. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter twenty nine and verse two. Bring it out. And it reads. It reads. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Right. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. They what? The, the people, people mourn. mourn. Right. So when the wicked are in authority, man, the people mourn, man. Right? And as you know, the Lord said in Job that the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, man. And how you know is because you have things like the alphabet community, man, taking over, man. That's forcing a wicked agenda to make you believe what they believe, man. To force things in your schools, man, to brainwash your children and to make them follow that wicked, nasty agenda, man. When your children are five years old, a little girl telling you that she's a little boy, right? 
I seen a video the other day of this sister. She was a teacher, man. And I believe it was the high school level, I'm sure. And maybe it was a, a little college class. I'm not sure. But the teacher asked the little, the little Edomite woman, you know what I'm saying? Hey, young lady, what's your name? And she said, I don't like to be called that. I call me them. Right? How you doing, sister? You got a couple minutes to hear the words of the Lord, sis? Y'all got a couple minutes to hear the words of the Lord? Hey, well, our people walk on in darkness, man. Right? Repent, you're Israelites, sister. Keep the commandments. Right? So, yeah, I watched this little video the other day, man, of this, this teacher, man. She was a sister, and she was greeting her classmates. So she asked the little sheet of Mike, you know, how you doing, ma'am? What's your what's your name? And the lady came back and tell her. The lady tells her, "Don't call me a her. I'm a they. Call me they or them." Like what kind of madness is that? Call me they or them. You know, look, Esau over here bugging out, man. You know, <laughs> pure madness, man. Right. But this is what happens, man, when the right, the wicked are in authority, man. You got these idiots walking around the world, man, and, 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 and making wicked decrees, man, changing laws, right? Deceiving the people, man. Telling them that they can do what they will, whatever they want to do and nothing matters. You know, that things won't, won't happen to you, right? That you don't have to keep the laws of the Most High God, man. Right, and that's the problem with the land and with the world, man. Everything is upside down. Everything is out of course. Right, let me get that piece of everything out of course. Right, the Lord is 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 really fed up with this place, man. It's to the point to where he's judging everything on this earth, man. Just last night it was another blood moon, man. Wake up this morning, man. Earthquake that shook up Morocco, man. Over a thousand people found dead, man. And a thousand more missing or injured. The Lord is not planning these days, man. He's sending another uh, a hurricane or whatnot on the east coast of the uh, United States, man. You know, the Lord is really touching this place, man. Because he sees the wickedness of this place, man. The foolishness, man, and the madness of this place. Right, read that. The book of Psalm, chapter 82, verse 5, and it reads, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. All the foundations of the earth are out of course, right? You know what I'm saying? Uh, right? So everything is upside down, man, in this place, man. Like I said, man, you can be a grown man, 36 years old, calling yourself a 12-year-old little girl, man, walking around in dresses and makeup, and you bet not had a nerve to disrespect them, man. Right? What's going on, King? You got a couple minutes to hear the words of the Lord? All praise to the most high. What's your nationality, brother? Come over here so I can hear you. Right? What's your nationality, brother? We are, what's your race? Black, right? So you believe in the Bible, right? Right? So we got to understand that that word black to us really is a derogatory term, right? Given to our pre uh, precious, right? Okay. We are, right? We'll roll with that. To be lacking or lacking what? Right? So being black or darkness is what? Void of light, right? And that's what we really are walking around in is void of light, right? We're walking around in darkness. We present ourselves as black people, right? But the Lord didn't call you black, right? The Lord called you Israel, man, right? Right? Let me show you that. Give me the Isaiah uh, 45 real quick. Well, my mind is here. Let's see, 54. Isaiah 45 should be. So her name, Jesus. Read that. This book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 4. Right. For Jacob, my servant's sake, right. and Israel, mine elect. Right. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee 
though thou hast not known me. Right, so the Lord surnamed us, man, Israel, man. He gave us that name long ago, man. With Jacob, his name was once Jacob, your forefather wrestled the angel, man, right? And when he could not prevail over Jacob, he gave him the name of Israel. Yashahala in the ancient Hebrew, right? It says he's the prince with the power of God, man. That's what your name means, man. You have power with the Most High God, man. But like you said, we walk around here and call ourselves black, right? And black just means what? Anything that's void of light, right? So we want to get the understanding of what void of light means and what it is, right? And what is the light? You're right, you're right. But the power of darkness is on the left-hand side, meaning used for wickedness. Because the Lord created darkness, and he created the light. You're right, right? But what is the light that he created? Right, let's get it. Let me give it Proverbs 6 and 23. I'm going to show you what the light is, right? It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 6 and verse 23. For the commandment is the lamp. And the light, let me lock it, and the law is light. Verse 23 from the top. Right. For the commandment is the limb, right. and the law is light. Right. And reproofs of the instruction are the ways of light. This for you too, brother. In the scream outfit, man. Right? You're an Israelite. Read that one more time. Slock. Verse 23 from the top. For the commandment is a limb, and the law is light. Right. And reproofs of instruction are the ways of light. Right? So the laws of the Most High God is the light. Right? And that's what we're avoid of in these days. We don't go by the commandments of the Most High God. We don't keep the commandments of the Most High God, right? So therefore, we are in darkness. That's why we walk around and call ourselves black, so like, because we walk around in void of that light. We are black people, right? But the Lord didn't say that you were black. He called you Israel, right? And He gave Israel the law, statutes, and commandments to follow, man. Right, and the Lord has a is a problem with us in these days because we are contrary to Him. Right, give me Hosea four and one. Right, and it's and it's the reason why you're walking around calling yourself black. Right, it's the reason why we don't understand who we truly are. Right, read that. It's the book of Hosea chapter four from the top. Right, hear the word of the Lord. Ye children of Israel, right. for the Lord hath a controversy in the inhabitants of the land, right. because there is no truth, no mercy, nor knowledge in God of God in the land. There's no truth, there's no mercy, and there's no knowledge of God in the land. Right? The reason why there's no knowledge of the Most High in the land is because our forefathers broke the commandments of the Most High God, man, and we are reaping those uh, curses in these times, man. Right? We're going to show you that real quick, man. Give me Deuteronomy 28. What you got? Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Yeah. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, right. to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses, all these, what? All these curses right. shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All right, so our father, forefathers long ago stopped keeping the commandments of the Most High God, right? So he put curses on our people. And one of the curses is, is you calling yourself black, man. Right, watch this, give me 37. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, where the Lord shall lead thee. The Lord said, I'm going to call you a byword among every nation where I have driven you throughout the earth. That's why wherever where you go, every nation that's around you, they got a derogatory term or a slur that they call you. Right? Black. Nigga, all these things, right? Everything but the child of the Most High God, due to us not keeping His commandments. Man. Right. So we're reaping those things, those evil things from the Lord because we walk around not doing what He told us, and that's why you can't take a plane anywhere to the land of black. Because where is the land of black? No, that's not the land of black. You know what I'm saying? Because there's many different shades of color over there. You know what I'm saying? Right? There, what is the language of black? There is no. You see that? So that's black? That's what you call black? See, there's no such thing as a language called black. There's no such thing as a land called black. And there's no such thing as a man called black. Because stretch out your arm. Your arm is brown. 
So why you call yourself black? You see what I'm saying? And why is that? We're falling after other nations, but we're not keeping what? God's what? Commandments. And he said that's going to happen to you, man. I'm going to show you that again. Read that. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter seven, chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. So the Lord said, I'm going to cause you to hey, be discontinued from your heritage, man. Right? You're not even going to know who you are. That's why you walking up and down the street and I say, hey, what's your race, black? But if I ask a white man, what's his nationality? He say, well, I'm German. My people go back to Germany. Or I'm Italian. Or I'm Russian. Right? Or I'm Irish. They can tell you these things. Or an Asian man can say, I'm from Japan. Or I'm from Okinawa. Or I'm from China. Or this and that. But we can't. When we say, Hey, where you come from, Africa? Well, guess what? There's 54 countries in Africa. Where you come from? What language did you speak? Right? He said, I'm going to make you discontinue from your heritage. We don't even know what our heritage is. But I'm going to show you real quick. We lost it. But I'm going to show you what your heritage is. Read that. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 17 and verse 11. Right. Beside this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for inheritance. He what? And he gave them the law of life for inheritance gave you the laws of life for inheritance and what did we establish earlier we stopped keeping the laws so we lost our heritage That's see right. that so what do we have to do to regain our heritage that's right that's right it's that simple do you know any laws of the Lord what commandments do you know brother well, go ahead and name. Let's see what you got, brother. What's your name, by the way, brother? Kelvin. Who? Kelvin. Kelvin. Okay, nice to meet you, Kelvin. I'm brother Joshua. Right, let's see what laws and commandments you know, brother. That's the first one, right? I'm going to take your time. Do what you got to do. Okay. Right. the same. Mm -hmm. uh, it's okay, brother. You know what I'm saying? But you, that means that you just got to go back to the drawing board, meaning you got to go back and read these commandments. But guess what? That's not only 10 commandments. There's over 600, right? So we want to give you something that's outside of those commandments, right? Let's give me that in numbers real quick. Give me that Leviticus. Right? Yeah, I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna give you two, brother. A little starter pack. Right? Right? That's that's it. I read that. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. Write it out. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. He is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. So do you eat pork? slow down but the lord said don't eat that at all because it's unclean yeah it's unclean to you right so now that you know you're not supposed to eat it that's a commandment of the most high and you know that we fell away from those commandments and we have to get back to those commandments so we can get out of the state that we're in that means don't eat no more pork right right let's give you another one finish that leviticus chapter 11 in verse 9, these shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So whatever is in the waters that have fins and scales, those are the things that you have to eat. Hey, sisters, y'all take a flower from the sisters. Right, y'all Israelites, repent, keep the commandments. All right. Uh huh. Okay. Okay, so yeah, that's what you gotta eat that comes out of the waters. It has to have fins and scales. 
that come out of the water. So you can't eat shrimp, crab, lobster, none of that. All praise to the Most High. That's a beautiful thing, right? Let's give you one more, right? Read that. It's the book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the border of their garment right. throughout their generations. Right. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Right. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. All right, so these are fringes, right? With the border of blue. You have to put these on the borders of your garments to help remind you to keep God's commandments, right? Because sometimes we need a reminder because we're God's chosen people, man. And we gotta need we need a reminder because we are in the midst of darkness. We are in the midst of these other nations, right. and we are influenced by these other nations, right? And sometimes we are tempted to do the things that they do, right? So we gotta understand that we're separate from everybody, and God told us not to do these things, right? So you have to start putting these on your garments. This is a commandment of the Most High God. Can you think you think you can start doing that? All praise to the Most High, man. That's a step to salvation. Right? That's how you show God you love him, right? Give me 1 John 5 and 3, right? That's how you show the most high you love him, right? Not with lip service, not with just talking. You have to put forth action, right? Read that. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not hard to do, man. Not to eat shrimp crab and lobster not to eat pork to put fringes on you man to keep the sabbath day which is today right friday night to sundown to saturday night sundown that's the sabbath you're supposed to rest right do no servile work no cooking no cleaning none of that you're supposed to take that day off and give it to the lord right so you know about the sabbath okay y'all praise the lord Keep it holy, exactly. That's right. So the Sabbath is the seventh day of the week, right? So remember, Saturday is the seventh day of the week, right? Sunday's the first. That's right. Because a lot of this world will tell you that Sunday's the seventh day, right? But that's not true. That's beautiful. You know that, brother. That's mighty, right? That's a step to perfection, man. When you keep the commandments of the Most High God in God's eyes, you are perfect. Right? You're perfect in his eyes. Right? So, I don't want to keep you long, man. You know, you got any questions or anything, man, you want to ask? Or and learn some more about yourself, brother. You know what I'm saying? And you're God, right? Start keeping these commandments. Go ahead. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. So this is the whole duty for man that was created on the earth, man, is to keep the commandments, man. And like I was saying, you know, that's the reason why this world is out of course, man. It's because there's no commandments in the land, man. You know what I'm saying? And everything has to be set back in a proper balance. Huh? Is that your light up, brother? You, you smoke, King? Oh, man, we got to, hey, give me that. I'm going to show you something about that smoking, brother. Right? I'm glad you seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to show you something about that smoking, brother. That's something that's detrimental to all people. You definitely can't do that, man. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. And it reads, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Him, him shall God destroy. So if you defile your temple, brother, by smoking, right, the Lord is going to destroy you. He's going to give you cancer, man. He's going to shorten your life. You know, all these things, man. You know what I'm saying? The Lord cannot dwell in a body that's subject to sin. When you're sinning, you're destroying yourself. The Lord says, he that sins wrongs his own soul. You know what I'm saying? And when you're doing that, essentially you're committing suicide. Man. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's what you're doing. So you got to stop that smoke because your lungs weren't created to inhale smoke. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, brother, I got a question. You got a pack of cigarettes on your hands? Nope, you ain't got Black and mild, you got a black and mild on you? Well, gay, brother, if you love the Lord, are you willing to take that black and mild and stomp it out right now, brother? Yes, sir. All praise to the most high. Stomp it out right there, brother. Throw it on the ground and stomp on it. Right? All praise to the most high. You have by Shimmy Al Shai, man. That's a beautiful thing, man. Right? That's called repentance right there, man. All praise, man. That's beautiful, man. Right? That's you showing the Lord you love him. And the Lord sees that, man. And right now, give me that angel rejoice in heaven, man. Over one sinner that will pick. Right? I'm going to show you a precept real quick, man. Right? That'll give you some joy, man. You know what I'm saying? It should give you some joy, man. You know? Well, I got to get back and study. I'll be forgetting. Read it. Read it. It's the book of Luke, chapter 15, and verse 13. So, 7. So, like, Luke chapter 15 and verse 7 It says I say unto you That likewise joy shall be in heaven Over one sinner that repented More than 90 and 9 Just persons which need no repentance that, So there's joy right now In the heavens man Before the most high God The angels are rejoicing because they see you repent man. That's they right. see you move away From that thing that was destroying you man As you cast that demon out man That's right, right? And you repent and turn from that, brother. Right, right. And the angels are in joy right now. Right? So you should be happy about that, man. You should be joyous right now, man. That's right. Right? That's one step closer to your salvation, brother. That's right. Right? So all praises to the most high, man. Like I said, man, if you got any questions, man, hey, the hey, the table is open, it's prepared for you, brother. You can do so, man. If not, man, I don't want to keep you out here in this heat too long. You know. All praise to the most high, man. You know what I'm saying? That's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it's, it's not that bad a thing, man. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, like I said, you know, we're God's chosen people, man. And and it's time for us to wake up in these last days, man. You know, and if you want to stay in here the rest of the lesson, man, you're more than welcome, man. Right? We talking about the wicked being an authority, man, and things that bring he, the wickedness brings to this earth. You know what I'm saying? And all the problems that the wicked has brought to this earth. Man, give me Proverbs 29 and um, 18. Right, Proverbs 29. What's your nationality, brother? Mexican. Mexican. Hey, man, you ever heard of the Israelites? You believe in the Bible, brother? Thank you. This yes, is for you, King. The so-called so -called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, you are the children of Israel. We got to repent and keep the commandments in these last days. And get away from damn Captain Kirk. That's right. Right? Read that, King. This is book of Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18. Right. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Right. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Is what? Happy, happy is, is he. he. Right. So where there's no vision at, man, people are perishing. And you see the, 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 the state of the world, man, there's so much death on the earth, man. Especially with our people. You got gang violence, man. You got diseases running rapid in our communities, man. Hatred for one another, man. You know, dying from so-called natural causes, but a lot of it is from the things that we eat, the things that we drink, our lifestyles, things of that nature, man. There's no vision because this place is wicked and they promote everything that's contrary to the laws of the Most High God, man. right? The Lord said, happy is he that keeps the laws, man. That comes life. You know what I'm saying? Give me Baruch 401 real quick. Life comes with that, man. Life eternal. When you choose to do what the Lord says, it keeps you away from evil. You understand? Read. Baruch chapter 4 verse 1. Right. This is the book of the commandments of God. Right. And the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life. Right. But such as leave it shall die. So if you keep the law, you come to life. And what you just done is you want to prolong your life. So you destroyed that instrument that was causing death in your life, man. You return back to keeping the laws by not smoking. So you choose life. And that's a beautiful thing in the eyes of the Lord, man. Right? But this world doesn't choose life. This world is contrary to everything. They create things that are contrary to the most high. How y'all doing, family? All right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, it's, and it's like everything that's promoted in this life is called a death style, not a lifestyle. The music that you hear, what is it always talking about? Kill your brother. Right? Steal your brother's woman. Well, guess what? Thou shalt not kill. That's one law, right? 
thou shalt not commit adultery. That's two laws. Our music promote that. So that's what? That's a death style being promoted in this land, man. Right? So we got to get away from that. Because you notice everything in the world, if you promote, if you try to come out and promote positivity, if you try to come out and, 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 and rap about something positive and uplifting your people, it don't get no airplay like it's supposed to. But if you go out there and you say, I'm a rob, I'm gonna steal, I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna destroy my people, well guess what? You the top of the billboard charts. You number one for 16 weeks in a row. You got radio play, right? Your stuff is on all the trending deals like Spotify and and, and Pandora, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? It's everywhere. The death style is promoted in this land because this land promotes nothing but death and folly. Right, read that. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 5 and verse 20. Right. Woe well, unto them that call evil good right. and good evil, right. that put darkness for light and light for darkness, right. that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Right. So the Lord said destruction. That's what woe means. Destruction to those that call evil good, right? Because that's what they say with the LBOP community. They say, it's okay, you can accept it. We all love you, God loves you. But that's evil in the sight of the Most High because that's right. another commandment that man should not lie with mankind. Right? Right? Like he lies with a woman, right? That's another death side promoted that our people follow wholeheartedly, right? Especially nowadays, you see more masculine women any effeminate men. You see that? That's a death style promoted in society, man. And these people make these uh, 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 laws and set them up over you so that you can go astray from the most high. Right? Hold it. Read that. Uh, this is the book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse, verse 25. And it reads, he, And he shall speak great words against the most high right and shall wear out the saints and the, what and shall wear, wear out the saints of the most high and that's what he's doing he's creating a death style for the uh saints of the most high god which is the black and speck and native americans and he's destroying us he's wearing us out man by his righteous or his wicked deceit uh, uh deceits right read and think to change times and laws right and that's what he's doing he changes laws right the most High gave you commandments of the bible he changes the laws into his own power. Right, read that. This is Isaiah chapter 10 from the top. Isaiah chapter 10. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. Right. And that right grievousness which they have prescribed. You see that? The Lord said destruction to those that write unrighteous decrees, right? Things that are contrary to the most high God, right? They say, hey, well, guess what? It's okay for you to break the Sabbath and go and shop on, on a Saturday, on a Friday night. Why do you think that they pay you on a Friday so you can go cash your check and you can go start buying things, right? You can travel on those days. All the best sales and all these things are on Saturdays, right? Black Friday, things of that nature, man. They set these things up to be against you, right, Reed? To turn aside the need from judgment right. and to take away the right from the poor of my people, right. that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. See that? And that's what they're doing. They done already took your heritage from you. They done took your nationality. They done took your customs, right? Everything from you, man. Now they're trying to take your salvation. They're trying to keep you in a docile and a sinful state because they know the Most High is not going to answer you as long as you're in sin. Right. They know he's not going to look for you. He's not going to fight for you. He's not going to do anything for you, man. So they set up these things over you to keep you in a state of, uh, 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 I forget the word, but I'm going to replace it with saying ignorance is bliss. They want to keep you in ignorance, right? So you don't actually know what's going on. For lack of better words, sleep. They want you to stay asleep. Docile, that's the word. They want you to stay docile, man. And they set taskmasters over you, man to keep you in subjection, man. Right, go ahead. This is the book of Psalm chapter 83, from the top. Keep not thou silence, O God. Right. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. Right. For lo, 
Thine enemies make a tumult, right. and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Right. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They have what? They, they have, have taken, taken crafty, crafty counsel, counsel against, against thy people. people. What's crafty counsel? Being sneaky right behind closed doors. They're crafty, they're smart, they move in subtility against you, man. Read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Right. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Right. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. See that? So they cut you off from being that righteous nation. Now you come up and say, I'm a black man, or I'm an African American, or I'm a Negro. Or I'm a colored, or I'm an Afro-American, right? You no longer call yourself Israel or Yasha Allah or from the tribe of Judah, Get that brother, man. right? Those things were set up to keep you sweet, man. Give me Judah five or twelve, right? right? And they put all these laws and rules over you to keep you in that state. So if you go outside of those things, they punish you, right? Read that. It's the book of First Maccabees, chapter one and verse forty-one, right? Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom right. that all should be one people. Yeah, what? That yeah, all what? should be one people. Yeah, right. And this place is a revived ancient Rome and ancient Greece. This place has taken all the ancient civilization customs and put it all in one. Right. So anything you read in the Bible from these other nations, it's right here today, man. Right. Read. And everyone should leave his law. So all the heathens agreed according to the commandment of the king. Right. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented with to his religion. See that in all these other nations, they put up these laws, these uh, different decrees and everything over you. And every other nation is in one or in unison with so-called America and his laws and his ways. And also many of the so-called Israelites, they are always following along with them. And they say, okay, well, everybody's one. We all the same. So let's do what they do. What they call this place, a melting pot, a mixture of everybody that's under one law. What they do when they tell you to stand up in the, in the classroom or whatever, put your heart, hand over your heart and do what? Pledge. Pledge. That's right. You pledge allegiance to their laws. One nation under God, right? Don't they make you say that? That's freaky. But who is their God? Satan. That's right. You see that? That's exactly, that's their God. Christ doesn't look like that. Yeah, that's looks right there. Look at that. <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. That's the devil that the Bible speaks of. Right? right? Read on. Many also of the Israelites consented to his religion right. and sacrificed unto idols and profane the set. It's so like and profane the Sabbath. And that's what you see walking around to or fro. People profaning the Sabbath, buying and selling, right? And consenting to their laws. Doing everything that these other nations are doing and thinking it's okay. But not knowing that they are the chosen people of the most high God and they're walking to the destruction. They have no they have no understanding of that, right? Sisters, y'all believe in the most high? Y'all got a couple minutes to hear the words of the Lord? Not right now, when it's time for the Lord, sissy. Or all the time, well, it's the time right now. And you're an Israelite, repent, keep the commandments, man. That's you right. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's too busy for the most high God, man. They say they love it, but they know. But their actions are far from it. And that's the problem. Our people don't consider who they are. Right? Give me that in Isaiah 1 and 3 real quick. And give me 2 Matthew 6 and 6. Right? Read that. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. Bring it up. The ox knoweth his owner, right. and the ass his master's crib. Right. But Israel but, doth, but but Israel Israel doth not know. Right. My people doth not consider. Right. You got an ox and you got a jackass. Two dumb animals. They know where they live and they know who their master is. But Israel, they don't know. They don't even consider who the most high is, man. They don't even care. They walk along and say, hey, you got a couple minutes on the words of the Lord? Uh, I know the Lord. Oh, really? They think they know the Lord. That's right. But guess what? It's the Sabbath day and they walking on doing their own pleasures. Give me 1 John 5 and uh, 2. Or oh, 1 John 2. 1 John 2 and 3. 
right? And they don't even they don't even know that they're under subjection. They feel like they're free. They don't even know that they, you know, the problem with them actually calling themselves a Jew. Like if they understood that they were really Jews and they were to call themselves a Jew, all hell would break loose because they don't want you to know that. They tell you that the so-called little small hat guys over there in Israel, those are the real Jews. But that's a lie, man. And they did that because they wanted you destroyed and know that, hey, guess what? As long as we keep their mind destroyed, their God will not defend them, man. Right? Read. Right. This will become the second Maccabees, chapter 6, and verse 6. Right. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep seven days or ancient feasts, right. or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. Right. So that's what you got nowadays as well. You can't even keep the uh, high holy days that you used to. They give you Christmas and Thanksgiving, you know, uh, Fourth of July, all oh. these things to keep you docile sleep. Oh. But the real Jews, us, we kept high holy days such as the Passover, the Feast of Tabernacles, the Memorial of Blowing of Trumpets, right? The uh, uh, the Day of Atonement, man. The Day of Simon, Purim, and so on and so forth, man. The Feast of First Fruits, right? That's what we did. But now we're consented to their laws and we can't even profess ourselves to be a Jew. Because you know what happened to Kanye when, did you ever heard of what happened to Kanye when he said that if we were the real Jews, what happened to him, Kanye West? Did you hear about that? I don't remember exactly. You don't know? Well, or, well, when the brother confessed us as being Jews, they took a lot of his money away, millions and millions of dollars. Kyrie Irving, you know who Kyrie Irving is? Yeah, they did the same thing to him. All he did was put a link on a social media platform and they blackballed him, man. Why do they not do that when you call yourself a Christian or you call yourself a Muslim? It, exactly. Give me that in Judah, what you hold. Yeah, read it. This book of Judah, chapter five and verse 11. It reads. Jer uh, Judah chapter 5 and verse 20 right out. It says now therefore My Lord and governor right. If there be any error against this people right. And they sin against their God Let us consider that this shall be Their ruin the Lord say, Let, Let us, us consider, consider that, that this shall, shall be their, their ruin. ruin So if our people keep going on A day to day life In a sinful lifestyle Then this is going to be Their ruin This is how we're going to keep them destroyed as a people Right read huh. It says, let us consider that this shall be their ruin, and let us go up, and we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by. So if this people come back to their laws of the Most High and start keeping them, read. Lest their Lord, like lest their Lord defend them, and their God be for them, and we become a reproach before all the world. Right. So that's what they're afraid of, to see brothers like this in unison and bringing out the truth. Because the truth what? The truth sets you free. Right? But as long as those people come over there, as long as those people are in authority, then the earth is going to be out of course. Right? Over there. Right? The earth is going to be out of course. Right? Yeah. Should pop up. All right, read that. Right. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, and verse 2. Bring it out. The righteous are in authority. The people rejoice, right? But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn, right? So when the righteous are in authority, the people are rejoicing. People are happy. People are at peace, right? People are together. People are following the commandments of the Lord. But when the wicked are in ruin, everybody's dying. Diseases are here, right? Natural disasters, war, all these things are happening, right? All at once, man. So we're trying to get back to the point of getting the righteous back in authority. And what does it mean to be righteous? Give me Deuteronomy um, 5 and 26. All right. What's your nationality, brother? Oh, oh okay. Okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> right? So what's it mean to be righteous? <laughs> I'm going to show you real quick. Read that. 26. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 26. Right. For who is there of all flesh that hath heard the voice of the living? 6 and 25, I think. 6 and 25. 
This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. That is what makes you righteous. Right? And who was given the laws and commandments of the Most High God? Israel. So that's how we got to get back to that righteous state by keeping the laws, statutes, commandments of the Most High God. To actually get into that new covenant. Because you do understand we're not in a new covenant right now, right? You know that? I'm going to show you what the new covenant consists of. Give me Hebrews 8 and 8 real quick. Right? I'm going to show you what the meaning of the new covenant is. Right? Hebrews 8 and 8. Right? Whoever get that. Right, read. This is in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8. And it reads, For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So we got to first get off of that paranoia. She can't be Israel. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. In the day, in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Right. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. Right. I will put my laws into their mind right. and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be. What's going on, brothers and sisters? Y'all got a couple minutes for the words of the Lord real quick? Right. I got a couple minutes to hear the words of the Lord real quick. Well, you know the Lord don't hear sinners. Right? Lord. That's that's the that's weak. That's weak. Right. You see that? The Lord don't hear sinners, man. Give me that John 9:31. I'm gonna show you that. I ain't gonna speak my own words. Oh, uh, we're gonna see what the Bible say then. John 9 and 31. Let's look at John chapter 9 and verse 31. And it reads. I know that John chapter 9 and verse 31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. What the Lord say? Now, now we, we know, know that, that God, God heareth not, not sinners. sinners. Right. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him be heareth. Exactly. And you walking out here with your ass cheeks out, man. Going off. Wicked as hell, man. You think God hearing you? Our people are destroyed. And that's a prime example, man, of being destroyed. Walking in a death style rather than a lifestyle. Because when the wicked or an authority the world is out of course and that's what they do right because there's a law that women are supposed to wear dresses right things that are not pertaining to a man but guess what you walking around with shorts that's cut to look like your damn drawers man out here with children are walking around and sitting that's wicked as hell man you know that's it Pure man is just looking funky, man. I hate to see our people like that, man. You know? But uh, read, read that. I'm going to show you what more righteousness actually looks like. Isaiah 2 and uh, 4. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 4. Right. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. Right. And that they shall beat their plowshares, I mean their swords into plowshares. Right. And their spears into broom hooks. Right. Nations shall not lift up war against nations, neither shall they learn war anymore. And that's what it's going to look like in those days when the righteous are in authority. There's no more any war going on, man. There's going to be ample peace worldwide, right? All nations are literally going to be at peace, man, right? And there will be no destruction and no more plagues, no more disease for the righteous men and women of the Lord, man. That's the new earth. That's right. That's exactly what it's going to look for, man. A role reversal. The kingdom is coming to these people. The Israelites, they're going to be in authority. And they're going to rule the earth in righteousness. Right? And the other people are going to have to be in subjection under us to get back in order to learn how to serve our God. Right. You know what I'm saying? That sounds huh? Something good to look forward to. And that's right, brother. Right. Say that in the mind. Now that looks like something good to look 
something good to look forward to. That's right. right. That's right. That's right, man. You should be excited for that, man. Go ahead. And then, like you said, it's something good to look forward to. Because what do our people have to look forward to in this in this place, in this world, right? right? We work all day until we die, man. That, that's what they set the society up for. Yep. But but now we got the truth. Understand that there's something better for our people. That's right. right? That's right, man. That's what the gospel is, man. To understand what is actually coming for us. Matter of fact, what you got? Go ahead. This book of Revelation, chapter five, verse ten. Right. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, right. and we shall reign on the earth. See that? Plain upon table, we're gonna reign on the earth, man. Matter of fact, give me that in the whole day. Give me that in Matthew again, Matthew six, because you know the Lord's prayer, right? right. Our Father who art in heaven. See, now you really didn't understand back in the day what you were actually praying for, right? But I'm gonna show you what you're praying for, right? Read that. This is the book of Matthew, chapter six and verse nine. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, right. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy what? Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Right. Thy will be done in earth. Where? In, in earth. earth. Right. As it is in heaven. That's where the kingdom is coming to the earth, like it is in heaven, where we will have rulership on the earth. That's right. As kings and priests of the Lord, man. Right. And what's going to be so dope is even the animals are going to be cool with you, man. You're going to be able to pet lions and tigers, man. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and all these things are going to be in unison, man. Give me that in Joel 5 real quick. Joel 5 and 24. Real quick. I'm going to show you that. Right. Joel 5 24. It's the book of Joel, chapter 5 and verse 24. Bring it out. And thou shalt know that the tabernacle shall be in peace. Right. And thou shalt visit thy inhabitation. That's like it. Thou shalt visit thy habitation and shall not sin. Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great in thine offspring as the grass of the earth. Right. Verse 22. Right. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Right. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. Right. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field right. and the beast of the field shall be at peace with thee. See that? Even the beasts are going to be at peace with you, man. You know what I'm saying? Walking down the street with a big old grizzly bird by your side, man. Might be riding on his back, man. That's going to be fun. That's going to be playing, man. You know what I'm saying? Something that you looked at on a cartoon or something and dreamed about. That's going to come true, man, in these last days, man. All we got to do is keep the commandments of the Lord, man. And we get back to that, man. Right? Give me Romans 13 and 11. Come read. This book of Zechariah, chapter 8. So, so like, this is the book of Zechariah chapter 8, and I'm going to start at verse 5. Right. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls right. playing in the streets thereof. Thus said the Lord of hosts, if it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, should it also be marvelous in mine eyes, said the Lord of hosts. Right. You see that, man? Kids are going to be out there, ain't worried about nobody shooting no guns, ain't nobody going to kidnap them. None of that, man. It's going to be a marvelous, peaceful time, man. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to worry about these other nations coming up and doing nothing to your children. They're going to be out there having people watch them that they're ruling over. Five-year-olds are going to be ruling over grown men. That's right. Other nations, man, telling them what to do. You know what I'm saying? Walking them around in chains. Get over here, boy. Like they used to do us. You know what I'm saying? Our pay back. See, say that again. We're going to get our, our payback. That's, That's right. right. That's right. That's mighty right there, man. Right. Right. This book of Isaiah, chapter 61 and verse 5. Bring it out. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Right. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. Yeah. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall you boast yourselves. See that? And we're going to boast proudfully before Yahweh by Shemuel Shai, man. Praising the Lord, his name, man. You know what I'm saying? For giving everything back to us, man. Right. That's right. That's what's coming, man. Let me read you these last couple precepts. I'm going to pass. Give me 30. Go ahead. Go over 30. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, and verse uh, from the top. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind right. among all the nations. Whether the Lord thy God has driven thee. So that's what we're doing right now. We're recalling the blessings that we could have had and the curses that we're under, right? 
under all this captivity that we have made to serve, now we're remembering who we are. Right, read. And shall return unto the Lord thy God. Right. And shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Right. Thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Right. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. He will what? Will, will turn, turn thy, thy captivity. captivity. Right. And have compassion upon thee. Right. And will return and gather thee from all the nations where the Lord thy God has scattered thee. So that's the salvation is Christ. The one you call Jesus Christ, his name is Yahweh Shai. He's coming back to gather his children from all the nations that he kept scattered us, right? That's right. So like this. Verse 4. Right. If any of thine be driven out unto the most I mean, outmost parts of heaven, right. from this will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from this will he fetch thee. Right. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which the, thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. Heaven, back in right? And he will do thee good and multiply thee after about thy father. Right. So like above thy father. Right. And thy and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love to to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul. That's that new covenant he was talking about, right? Right. That 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 thou mayest live. Right. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies. He will do what? Put these he curses upon, upon thine enemies. enemies. Just like you said, a role reversal. That's what's coming, man. Right? So give me that revelation. I mean, uh, Romans 13 real quick. Right? Read. It's the book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. Right. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Right. For now is our salvation nearer than what we believe. So now it's high time to wake up out of that sleep that we've been in and return to our God by repenting and keeping the commandments, man. Because right. our salvation is closer than what we would believe, man. We're living right. in the last days, right? right? So it's almost here, brother. We got to hang on and endure to the end because Yahweh, which is the name of the Most High God, is sending back his son, Christ, whose name is Yahweh Shad, right? In the ancient paleo Hebrew, right? And he's coming back to save his people. Man, the so called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, right? But read that. It's the book of Joshua, chapter 24, and verse 15. Right. And it reads And if it be evil unto you to serve the Lord, right. choose you this day whom you will serve. Right. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, Salaki, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. Right. But as for me and my house, the Lord say, as, as for, for me and my house, house right. we will serve your house. That's right. Hey. Me and my people, we gonna be commandment keeping, faith having Israelites, man. In these last days, man. That's right. And with that, I'm gonna say, Kum ya shalom, Kum ya shalom, Kum ya shalom, Kum ya shalom. And you can stay tuned. I'm gonna pass it to the next dynamic speaker, man, on the scene. Ah. Hey, there go your water, King. Ah. Our praise to the Most High. Our praise to the Most High. How you? How you doing, family? Y'all believe in God? Y'all got a couple minutes for the Lord? Jesus Cristo? Blessing deals? Y'all don't believe in God? If you believe in God, you'll stop and give God two minutes. That's right. That's right. How you doing, family? You believe in God, sis? Yeah. Already. Let, let me give you one verse then. Just one verse, family. One verse. That's right. Let me get the book of Matthew 15, 24. Right? I praise. I'm going to give you one verse, family. Right? Because what we're up here teaching is that so-called black Hispanic Native Indians are the Israelites of the Bible, right? God's chosen people. Because in this land that we call America, we've been deceived and taught lies, right? They told you that you were black, African-American, and all these names, but God, he called you Israel, right? Israelite from the tribe of Judah. You know who else comes from the tribe of Judah? Jesus Christ. That's right. Right? And you know he looks just like us. He looks just like me and you, right? That picture that they, they, they called Jesus, that was a lie, right? So when we think of Jesus Christ, think of a mighty black brother, okay? Because that's who our Lord is. But read that. This is the right. book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 24. Right. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What did Christ say? I, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So that's what we got to understand is that Christ... The Jesus of this Bible, he said that he was only sent for his people. Right. That's right. The sheep of the house of Israel. 
right? I know that's contrary or, or opposite of what we've been told in these churches growing up because they get paid off by the same people that gave us a false image of the Messiah, right? But Jesus Christ out of his own words, his own lips, he said he was only sent for us, sister, right? Brother and sister, right? So we got to understand that we're living in the last days. Let me get Matthew 24 and verse 13. Bring right? it out. And did y'all get a flyer? Y'all got a flyer? Awesome. Make sure you tap into that information and understand that Christ. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and dap them up, man. You know what I'm saying? Familiar faces, all places. Yeah, yeah. For sure, man. Right? We got to understand that Christ is coming back soon. And one of the major prophecies that Christ gave his people before the return with us waking up and remembering who we are. Right? Read that. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. And then shall the end come. So you said the gospel of the kingdom, which we understand now what the kingdom actually is. Right? It's not fairy tales. It's not going up into the sky with, with white angels, bow guarding the gate. No, the kingdom is within, uh, within us. The so-called black Hispanic native Indians. We are that kingdom. Exactly. We are the temple of God. He said this gospel of the kingdom, the fact that we are God's chosen people, is going to be preached to the four corners of the earth, and then the end is going to come. That's right. right. You see these brothers up here, these sisters and stuff like that. We got the fringes on. We got the signs and the Bibles out. Hey, it's not just a little rock. Right? We all over the world. We all, we in every single city across America, you got brothers out there waking up our people, shaking their hand, and telling them, repent and keep the commandments because our Lord is coming back. And he's coming to establish his kingdom on this earth. That's right. And if you want to be a partaker of the kingdom that's coming to this earth, rulership and having dominion over these nations, because that's what the kingdom of it, kingdom is. What's a kingdom without subjects? Right? right? We're living in the so-called white man's kingdom where we are his subjects. We're his servants. Come. He doesn't have anything without the so-called black Hispanic and Native Indians at the bottom, you know, building up his empire. Right. The same thing is in the kingdom of heaven. He said, let me get uh, Psalm chapter 2. All right, Psalm chapter 2 and 12. All right, this is Christ because people don't understand this Bible. They don't understand what Christ is really coming back to do. He's coming back to break these nations into pieces and then to take them as his captives or possessions. That's right. right. Read that. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 2 and verse 12. Bring it out. Kiss the sun. Start at verse 7. God, verse 7. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son this day, have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen, the heathen for thine inheritance, and the utmost parts of the earth for thy possession. Right. So the Lord said he's going to give his son the heathen for an inheritance. Mm. If you inherit something, that is, that's your, now your belonging. Right? Just like the white man, he passed down his inheritance. Everything that he gathered up from he was a little jet to being a hundred years old, he gives it down to his son. That's an inheritance. But the Lord said, you're going to have all these heathen for your inheritance. Right. right? The heathen are the other nations outside of this 12 tribes. Right. Right. Like the Chinese man, the Japanese man, the white man, these, all these African nations. The Samoans and Hawaiians, right? He said, they're going to be your possessions, right? And then let me get Revelation 2 and 26. Bring it out. Because Christ said, look, if you overcome, like we read in uh, Deuteronomy, yeah. Yeah. he said, if you overcome, then uh, you're going to partake, you're going to partake in that possession with me. He said, you're going to rule them with me. Because that's what he's coming to get whenever he comes back. He's coming to get his inheritance. But he's told his brothers, right? <laughs> He told his brothers, me and you, look, if you overcome this, what I'm going to give you, go ahead. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 26. Bring it up. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. So he said, look, I'm going to give you power over the nations if you just overcome and keep the commandments to the end. I'm going to give you power. You're no longer going to be subjugated to your manager, right? To your boss, right? We, we know what it is, man. They, they, they just slaves us, man. You're not going to be subjugated to these officers and principals, these people that are the so-called higher-ups anymore. You're going to have power over them now. Right? Go ahead. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. With a rod of iron. As a vessel of the potter, as the vessels of the potter, shall they be broken to shivers. 
All right, so the Lord said he's going to give power to the Israelites to rule over these nations with a rod of iron. Right? Kanye, for sure, tap into the information, this life changing information. We got to understand because that's the salvation that is promised to the children of Israel. Right? Rulership and dominion over the people that took us into captivity, that have subjugated and oppressed us for hundreds and hundreds of years. Right? So, and that's the thing too, like the brother was bringing out earlier. We got Kyrie Irving coming out with the truth. All he did was drop a link so brothers can inquire of the information, right? And he gets ostracized, man. He gets blackballed, he gets suspended for 10 games, man. He loses all type of endorsements and deals just for posting the Amazon link, man. Right? But Elon Musk, one of the world's richest men, right? Whenever he bought Twitter, he was at the damn, the, uh, the little, the party or whatever that they did to celebrate him buying Twitter, man, he was in a whole Baphomet costume, right? right? A whole Baphomet costume, openly worshiping the spirit of the demon Satan. Nobody said a word about it. It's on no, it's on no, it's on no, it's on no type of mainstream media, right? Nobody's writing reports and stuff about how Elon Musk is an open Satan worshiper, man. And he, and he controls one of the largest social media platforms in the earth, man, right? But as soon as the so-called black man talks about, I'm an Israelite, I'm a Jew, oh, we're, we're, we're anti-Semitic, we're, we're, we're hate speech, right? We're bigots, all of these things. But what the Lord said in Galatians 4 and 16, bring that up, right? So we gotta understand like Christ said, hey, blessed are you when you are persecuted for righteousness sake. All we're trying to do is establish order in a society that's backwards. All we're trying to do is bring light to a world that's full of darkness. All we're doing is telling our people, stop killing each other. Stop destroying your temple. Stop sleeping around on your husband. Stop beating your wife. Take care of your kids. Be a man, right? And we get, we get, we get hated for that, man. Bring that up. This is the book of Galatians, chapter four, verse 16. And I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth. Because I what? Because, because I tell you the truth. Hey, and the law is truth, man. The law is true. All we're trying to do is set order back in a society that's uncivilized, man. That's lawless, right? But you know, that's why the that's why the Lord said, "Hey, this world and everything in this world is going to get burnt up, the second death, because there's no righteousness in this land." All right? Let me get that in Second uh, Peter chapter three. What you got? Preach that. Okay, come, on, bring it up. It's the Book of Proverbs chapter eleven from the top. A false balance is abomination to the Lord. Right. But a just weight is his delight. Right, so the, the Lord is a, is a God of duality, right? He said a false balance is abomination, right? So you can't have everything be all good, right? Otherwise, everything would be all good. But the Lord is going to set up uh, whenever his kingdom is established, it's going to be all good. We have been living in the time of the Gentiles ever since Adam fell, man. Ever since Adam fell, he sinned against God. Hey, the Lord, he gave this world to the heathen, to the people that he didn't choose. That's why the, uh, the Egyptians, they were able to take the Israelites into slavery, That's right. right? That's why he had the land of Canaan. It was one of the most prosperous lands in the earth. That's why it's called a land flowing with milk and honey. And he gave that land, he promised that land to the Israelites. But he said, look, if you don't keep my commandments, I'm casting you out of this land. Right. And that was an opportunity that we had to take back our world, which we failed again. So he's like, all right, cool. I'm gonna cast you out the land. I'm gonna let these heathen run your land, right? And then I'm gonna let these Gentiles continue to rule and to prosper. That's why you got these great cities, man, that these nations have, like Hong Kong, Tokyo, Shanghai, Dubai, right? Thailand, you know, hey, you know what I'm saying? Then they got all these, man, Vancouver, right? Toronto, New York City, so on and so forth. They were, they're, they're prospering, the heathen, man, they haven't, our people though, we have nothing, right? All we have is what they've given us. No, we've gotten nothing of ourselves because we're not autonomous. We're still subjugated and, and oppressed to the same people that brought us over here on slave ships. And that's all pursuing to us breaking our God's commandments. All right. Read some. Come, bring that up. Uh, this is the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, 
in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up, shall be burned up. Seeing then that all of these things shall be dissolved, be dissolved. Man, so what is hot enough to dissolve things? He said that the elements are going to melt with fervent heat, right? What's hot enough to do that? I'm gonna tell you. Wait, what'd you say, brother? Nah, nah, you wrong, you wrong, you wrong. If he wanted to, he could, he could do it like that. You know, his word is a fire and a flame. But the Lord, he operates in a realm of men, right? The same way that the Lord didn't get off his throne, whip out his magnificent, majestic belt, and whoop the black Hispanic Native Indians, the Israelites. He didn't do that. What'd he do? He used these nations to punish us. He used the so-called white men to bind us up, put us in chains, and put us on cargo slave ships. So the Lord, he operates in the realm of men. Right? That's Daniel chapter 4 and 17, that he rules in the kingdom of men. So what the Lord did, he created these engineers, these nuclear physicists, and these scientists, right? And, and they're really good at what they do, so much so that they've developed a weapon called an ICBM, which is an intercontinental ballistic missile. You, you, know, what's, you know what's going on, brother, right? The Lord had these men create these weapons for his indignation, for his wrath, because that's how America is gonna get destroyed. And various parts of this earth are also gonna be destroyed by these same weapons, man. Right? You see what happened to Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Well, that happened almost, what is it? Almost 80 years ago? 80 years, right? 80 years. How much more advanced is the technology and the weaponry today? Right? It has to be way, it is. way advanced. Right? So, so, just to put it into perspective, right? The, the atom bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki was 15 kilotons, right? One, one uh, nuclear that, that one nuclear missile that Russia has is 50 megatons, right? It takes a thousand kilotons to equal one megaton, but they have 50 megatons in their nuclear missile, man. That's something that is literally gonna blow up the entire East Coast. It literally will wipe off California off the map, man. They got one of them. But let me get Jeremiah chapter 51, and I believe it's verse seven, because it's not just Russia that got these weapons either. China got them, North Korea got them, Iran, they got them now, right? Saudi Arabia, Brazil, all of these nations, they have this, these weapons. That's why they come together and they're like, we don't even need America anymore. We were afraid of America because what they were able to do, right? And that's in the Bible too. Let me get Revelation chapter 13, right? Revelation chapter 13. Let me get Jeremiah 51 um, verse three. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51 and verse 3. 32. Verse 2. And will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her. So like, we don't, we don't start at the top. Let's get the context. We're not in a rush, right? Let's go ahead and get it. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51 from the top. Bring that out. Thus said Yahweh, behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. So the Lord said, I'm going to rise up against Babylon, a destroying wind, right? Wind represents destruction. Because right now, in the spiritual realm right now, there's, there's four angels, right? That are manipulating the minds of these men, right? These, these presidents and, and these governors and things of that nature, these generals, right? They're holding back the four winds, which is completion for destruction. They're holding back the four winds until the elect number of Israelites are sealed. Let's get that first. Revelation chapter exactly. 7. 144,000. That's right. Exactly. That's what. Go ahead, bring it up. From the top. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 7, from the top. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, right? holding the four winds of the earth. See, they're holding back the four winds. These four angels, they're on each side of the earth. Go ahead. That the wind should not blow. On the, that the wind should not blow on the earth. See that? So they're holding back the destruction right now. And they're doing that for a specific purpose. Go ahead. Holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the seas, nor on the any trees. Right, so the seas are symbolic for the nations, right? And, and the Bible is very parabolic. That's why your average Christian, when they read the Bible, they get bugged out and confused because they don't understand it. Like, I'll be brought up, 
God is, is a God of duality. A lot of the words in this Bible, it, it has sim symbology, right? It has double meaning, right? So the winds is a structure, the seas represents the other nations, right? And the trees represents the Israelites, right? We read in uh, Isaiah chapter 61 that the Lord is going to plant us and we shall be called trees of righteousness, right? right? But keep going. Verse 2, and I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to earth, the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the four. This. Y'all got a couple minutes to hear the word of the Lord, family? All right, well, check it out. We got to repent. We're living in the last days, brother. If you want to save yourself and your family, yeah, you connect with God by keeping his commandments in these last days. That's right. Let's start over. Okay. Verse 3. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the seas nor the trees, till they have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. See, the Lord, he told them, don't hurt the trees nor the, the seas. Nothing. Don't, don't let the wind blow until we have sealed the servants of the Lord in their foreheads. Right? Because there's a mark of the beast. You've heard of the mark of the beast, right? What do you think the mark of the beast is? Right. So the mark of the beast is you just pretty much. Uh, y'all got a couple minutes for the word, family? Y'all know what the mark of the beast? Y'all know the mark of the beast is here, right? If you, if you accept the ways of America, you accept in the beasts, right? You don't want to get marked for that destruction because that's all it is. The mark of the beast, right? Well, who is the beast? The beast is America, right? So the Lord is saying, I'm going to set a seal in the servants of the Lord, and they're going to be sealed in their foreheads, right? So if you're not serving the Lord, but you're serving the beasts, maybe by breaking God's commandments, first and foremost, right? You assimilate into the, into the ways, you celebrate all of, the, all of the false holidays that they've set up in, in worship to pagan gods like Christmas, Halloween, Valentine's Day, all of these holidays, right? If you accepted and assimilated into the ways of America, you accepted the mark of the beast, right? That's what the mark of the beast is. The number of the beast is 666, right? The image of the beast, right? White supremacy, right? So, so that's, what the, that's what the beast is. But the Lord's saying he's going to hold back the winds until the servants are sealed, right? So that's why it's important for brothers like us to come out here week in and week out and to wake up our people, letting them know, look, you have to repent. You have to keep the commandments. Because the people that are doing that, they are going to be the ones to receive that seal. To be saved from the four winds. That destruction. But let's go back to this. <clears throat> uh, Jeremiah 51 and 2. And will send unto Babylon banners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble shall they be against her round about. So the Lord said, I'm going to send against Babylon fanners. Because they're the ones that got the winds, but the angels are the ones controlling those fanners. Who are the fanners? Again, Russia. They're the primary fanner. China. Saudi Arabia. Hey, uh, all them African nations that they just made a league with, those are the fanners. Because what's the fan do? It blows wind. Go ahead. Verse 3. Against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow. And against him that lifted himself up in his uh, uh, slakia. Break a uh, bridge in and spare. Oh, it's like you. Verse 3 against him that bendeth, let it the archer bendeth his bow, right? And against him that lifted himself up, and he bridged and spare yet, it's like you, and spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her hosts. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, that they that are thrust through in her streets. For Israel have not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, or the Lord of hosts through his land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. I'm, 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 uh, this one right here, right? But I want make bright the arrows. I like that one right there. So I'm watching. Okay. I, I want, I want, it said they all going to point their arrows, right? Give me, it's like, give me one second, bro. right? Spare no arrow. 
Jeremiah 50 and 14, my bad. You know, the, the Lord, he's so much against Babylon that he had to give two chapters about the same thing, man. Look, all you nations, y'all come together and y'all destroy America, man. Shoot your arrows at America. But first, go back to uh, 51. Because watch this. He said, make bright the arrows. Let me get 2nd Ezra chapter 16. And uh, I think it's verse 9. When they go across the earth, across the world, you know what I'm saying? You know what I want. Con, verse 6. Verse 12. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Okay, Slocky, verse 11. Make bright the arrows, gather the fields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, for his device is against Babylon. All right, so he told, he told them to make bright the arrows. You know, back in ancient war, when they would light the arrow on fire and then they would shoot it, right? Well, these arrows, these arrows, it's not talking about an actual arrow from an archer, right? right? You got that scripture where it says, uh, they used to fight with sword, but this one's gonna be with uh, oil, fuel. Fuel, fuel and fire, man. Fuel and fire. <laughs> that's that's what this war is gonna be fought with. It's not gonna be fought with with your with your regular degular Glock nine, man. It's gonna be got with fuel and fire. Watch this. Yeah, go ahead. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter nine and verse five. Bring it up. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise. Right, because it's with confused noise. Because you you've seen the movies when they're running in a the battle, they got the they got the swords drawn, they're on the horses, and then they just collide. And all you hear is ching ching ching. Ah, and people screaming and stuff, you know. That, that's the confused noise when they run in the battle. Go ahead. And garments rolled in blood. Right. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. He said, but this one, this battle, is going to be with burning and fuel of fire, man. That's bombs. That's nukes. That's that's dang uh, tanks, man. That's your Humvees and, and your, your Blackhawks, man. Right. Your damn suits. Yeah, yeah, all, all them, man. All right, the nuclear submarines. Read that. Uh, this is the book of Second Edges, chapter 16 and verse 13. Twelve earthquake. In verse 12, the earthquake and the foundations thereof, the sea arising up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled, and the fishes thereof also. All right, because uh uh even even if you if you see a nuke hit the water, man, it's gonna cause tsunamis. Earthquakes, terrible hurt, like terrible uh, ty tycoons, typhoons, whatever, right? That's what's coming, bro. It's gonna be nukes all over the place, even in the seas. It's gonna create all type of so-called natural disasters, but it's not gonna be natural. It's gonna be through war, right? Go ahead. And the fishes thereof also before the Lord and before the glory of his power. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. And his arrows that sh that he shooted are sharp, and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. Into the ends of the world. He said, "These arrows, they're not like your regular arrows. They're being shot from one end of the earth unto the other, right?" Now Ezra, you know, he lived 450 BC circa, right? So he never seen a missile before. So he's not like, "Dang, is that a missile?" He doesn't know what a missile is, right? So he's just describing it to the best of his ability. Right, but he's saying that these missiles that I'm seeing in this vision, or these arrows I'm seeing in this vision, man, they're being shot from one end of the earth to the other. They're making the sea and stuff, you know, like, like, but like go crazy, right? Yeah, so we on the brink of World War III, which is a beautiful thing. It's prophetic, man, right. and, and it must happen, and it's going to happen because God said it's gonna happen, right? And that's gonna be used to liberate his chosen people. Whenever the, the winds blow, because the elect are sealed, that's when the Lord is going to come back and save his people, right? right? Th th at that same time. But first, we're, we're in the time where we're approaching a, another heavy event. It's all going to happen, like boom, 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 boom. Things going to start ramping up. It's going to start getting crazy. We're not going to be able to teach the Bible out here like we're teaching it now, right? And then it's also going to come a time... of that nature, right? Not gonna be able to go to McDonald's, man, right? And then the people that were out here, they're gonna be getting hunted down, right? Hunted down and delivered up, tortured and killed, man, right? All these things are gonna happen while World War III is kicking off. And then World War III is gonna reach a peak, right? When America gets destroyed. 
nukes, right? Like nukes. Right. And all these other nations, they're gonna be looking like from afar. They're gonna be on looking at the TV, looking at the news, seeing America got destroyed. They're gonna be crying, broken hearted. All the people that, you know, were in league with America, that is, right? But at that time, the Lord is gonna come back and save his people. You got a precept though? Before we get too far. This is the book of Second Andrews, chapter 16 and verse 70. Bring it out. For there shall be in every city, it will slack in every place, in the next city, a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none. Right, so in every single city, because like I said, this truth is being preached at a on a high level in every city across America. Right? Us coming out here telling our people, hey, we the Israelites, we need to repent. We are living in the last days. There's going to be a great insurrection in every city, and they're going to be focused on those that fear the Lord. And they're going to be like madmen. They said they're going to not spare any. They, they're not going to care. Right? But the Lord said, look, hey, he's going to keep you in, in, in the shadow, right? In the secret place. You're going to abide in the secret place in the shadow of the Almighty, if that be your lot. Right now, there's going to be certain individuals, right, that are going to be caught up. They're going to be delivered up, and they're going to be tried. That's what it's going to go into. Keep going. But still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. Right. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are the chosen, right. and they shall be tried as gold is in the fire. Right. Oh, ye, oh, hear, O oh, ye, my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. All right, and that time of trouble is called Jacob's trouble, right? right? A time of persecution that has never been so, so long as, as this earth has been abiding, man. Meaning, it's gonna be worse than slavery. It's gonna be worse than the transatlantic slave trade. The, the rate that they're gonna be killing our people is gonna be crazy, man. Like I said, they're gonna be like mad men, sparing none. It's because, let me get uh, Revelation 12 and 12. You there already. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath. Wait, who's come down unto us? For the, the devil, devil is come, come down, down unto you, you having great wrath. And we know who the devil is. Hey, they gonna come down upon us with great wrath. That's Why? Right. Why? Because he know it that he had but a short time. Because he knows his time is up, right? If you knew that your kingdom was done for, if your time of rulership, if your time of peace and prosperity and everything that you thought you knew is going like that, wouldn't you fight tooth and nail for it? If you knew that we were the main ones bringing down your kingdom by just coming out here and reading the scriptures. Exactly. They will try to eliminate us because we are their problem, right? But we are our people's solution, right? So we're going to come out here as long as the Lord, you know, gives us breath, man. As long as we in the time where we're able to come out here and teach because the Internet is going to be shut down. They're going to cut the EMPs, you know, all of that, man. So we got to take advantage of the time that we do have, that grace that's still open because once some lights go out, Hey, that door is closed. That's right. The Lord said, once I take my servants off the street, you, you, you hey, it's sad. All you're going to have is what you have, right? And then our people, they're going to be destitute, not knowing where to go, not knowing where to follow. And then they're going to do whatever the devil tells them to do. They can go into the FEMA camps. They're going to take any type of device, maybe a microchip. They might, they might eat food, sacrifice to idols, man, like swine's flesh, right? Shrimp, crab, lobster ham sandwiches, right? They might make them worship Caesar Borgia, man. They might they might take advantage of them, take them in the back room and do God knows what. That's what the devil's gonna do, man. Go ahead. This is the book of Amos, chapter eight, verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of thirst for the water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Right, so that's called the famine of the word. Right. When the Lord isn't gonna have his servants out here on the highways and byways anymore right when they're literally gonna just they're gonna try to take the bible away from you right and it ain't gonna be no youtube so you can't go on youtube and be like dang what was the hebrew Israelites talking about uh, they were trying to warn us this whole time they're gonna try to look ain't no youtube ain't no phones bro 
The Lord said he's going to send a famine of the word. Go ahead. This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 25. But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee and shall bind thee with them. And thou shalt not go out among them. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb and shalt not be able to reprove the Slakia and not be to them a reprover. Hey, family, look, Naruto ain't going to save y'all in these last days. Right? Y'all got to repent and come back to the Lord, man. Look, hey, I rock with Naruto heavy, though. But look, there's a lot of lessons in that, man. And you got to come back to your God. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh in these last days, man. Right? Right? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Right? That's the Paleo-Hebrew, okay? Because we're Hebrew Israelites, right? We're, we're Hebrew people. Jesus obviously isn't his name. All right, Jesus is just a Greek transliteration, right? His, our God's name is Yahweh, right? That's who, that's who people call God, the Father. His name is Yahweh, right? And his son's name, who the world ignorantly knows as Jesus, his son's name is Yahweh Shai, right? So you got Yahweh, and then you got Yahweh Shai, right? We got some. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and I'm gonna start at verse eight. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Are the beginning, the beginning of, of sorrows. sorrows. That's what time we're living in now. The beginning of sorrows where we're starting to see wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, pestilences. Matter of fact, there was an earthquake just yesterday over in Morocco. Are right, you heard about that? Yeah. And and, and it's so crazy because people in, in America, they're just, you know, happy-go-lucky, living their life and acting as if everything is normal, right? But over there in Morocco, they're dealing with real-world problems. Like thousands and thousands of people dying in an earthquake having rubble and whole buildings collapse on top of them and children and thousands more injured but this is one of the signs let me get second Ezra chapter 9 hey hey that's Psalm chapter 9 he said that the, the heathen he said the heathen are taken in the pit and wherein they have laid man right and they caught up in that pit now right they over there they, they got their judgment but hey last year Around this time, right? Hey, there was an earthquake in Turkey, man. They killed, yeah, at least 50,000. But again, it's, it's uh, people over here in, in America, they're like, well, it didn't happen to me. It's not over here. So it didn't happen to them. But God is judging this earth for what they've done to his people. For them just being bystanders and really helping out our enemy take us into captivity and keep us docile because every nation on this earth knows who we are except us huh. that's why the, uh, the brother brought out or we brought out earlier that they've taken crafty counsel against us what do you think they have the United Nations for right the European Union for right they got uh, 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 they, the BRICS the BRICS Alliance they got also um, what's, the, what's the UN not the UN, not the UN but the they got the League of Nations, but they got all type of people that come together. We're not sitting at none of them tables. We have no representatives, right? Who is who is talking about the plight of the so-called black man and black woman and Latino man and Latino woman? They don't care about us. That's right. But instead, they, they, they figure out ways to keep us in sin, figure out ways to keep us asleep from who we are, right? But hey, the Lord said, look, I don't need y'all. I got my people. Right? He got his people that are going to come out and wake up his people. Right? His servants, the prophets. Right? right? Read that. This is the book of Second Nedra, chapter 9, and verse 1. Read it out. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. Right. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. All right, so he said, measure the time, meaning look at what's going on in the earth, line it up with the scriptures, and you're going to know what time you're living in, right? He's finished tell us some, some of the signs that he gave to let us know what time we're living in. Go ahead. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes, earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. He said earthquakes and uproars, right? Now, we got to understand our timing is not the most highest time, right? One day with God is a thousand years to us. Right, but there, there a couple years ago, a few years ago, George Floyd, right? Whenever that white man, uh, what Derek Chauvin or whatever his name is, whenever he 
stepped on our beloved brother, George Floyd's neck for nine, 10 minutes and killed him, man. Cold blood, while all of our people, they just recorded, hey, there was uproars all over the world, everywhere. Every kingdom and nation was talking about Black Lives Matter, but what changed, man? What changed? But they were still a yet, they were still in every, every country protesting Black Lives Matter all across the world. Right in France, they've been having uproars. They've been overthrowing their government. In Nigeria, they threw, they threw out the French embassy, man. Right? Over in Russia, they've been having coups taking place over there in their country. Right? In America, they ran through the White House. Right? Hey, so the Lord said, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of people in the world, then shalt thou well understand that the most high spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world has a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. The, the end, end is manifest. manifest. Hey, brothers, how y'all doing? Y'all got two minutes for God? Just two minutes, family. All praises. All praise, all praise. Nah, nah, y'all ain't on the time crunch for God. Don't even play like that, bro. Look, what's your, what's your ethnicity, man? Your race. African-American. African what about you, bro? Same thing? Okay, where, where in Africa are y'all from? Zimbabwe? For real? Yo, yo. Do you got family in Zimbabwe though? Okay, okay. Okay, how, how did you uh, come to that conclusion? Like ancestry? Okay, well. We're up here today right now to tell our people, you know, the descendants of the transatlantic slave trade. Did your parents descend from the transatlantic slave trade? Like, are you, are you a descendant of slavery? Yeah? Okay. So we up here to tell our people, right, the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Indians, you call yourself African-American today, but that's not who you are, right? God said that you are an Israelite, right? From the tribe of Judah, I'm assuming. Right? You know who else comes from the tribe of Judah? A man named Jesus Christ. Right? What do you think Jesus Christ looked like, according to scriptures? Right, right. That's why I said according to scriptures, because man, they gonna tell you anything. They gonna say he's olive color, when there's only two types of olives. First of all, there's a black olive, and then you got green olives. So you telling me he's green? Nah. Oh, well, hey, well, I've, I've, seen, I've seen Blurple Brothers. I've seen Blurple Brothers, right? But nevertheless, right? Yeah, right? So point, point being, right? According to scriptures, Christ is described as a, as a so-called black man with woolly hair. Right, it said he was so dark, it looked like he was burned in a furnace. His feet were brass, like they got burnt, right? And then woolly hair, right? So obviously we're the only people on this earth that have woolly hair, right? But that's really not the point. When you look at the state of the so-called blacks and Hispanics today, what would you say our condition is? As a whole, collectively. It, in, in what way? Like, I'm talking about, like, economically, like, where are we at? Like, on the totem pole. I'm talking about income, average earnings of that nature. Living situations, et cetera. Pretty low, right? Why is that, though? Have you ever asked that question? Right. No, I, I don't disagree with that, but there's, there's, there's more to it because a lot of our people, they're suffering from something called generational trauma, right? Our people suffer from generational trauma in which they've been conditioned and brainwashed to think a certain way, right? Because of the condition and the environment that they've been placed in, right? Again, you got to think about it like this. Slavery wasn't that long ago. The Emancipation Proclamation was 1865. Where did our people go after we got off the plantations? I'll tell you where we went. We went right back to the plantation. We didn't have nowhere to go. 
And then they set up something called sharecropping, which was just slavery, except now you get a little bit of what you what you work for, right? And that, that lasted all the way up until World War I, World War II, right? Literally. And then finally, we have something called the Civil Rights Movement, where our people, they tired and sick of, man, look, I've been busting my ass, my family been working for the same man, the same family, right? All these years, we tired of, of being oppressed. But guess what, that, it, it didn't change anything, right? So again, this has been generational. But I'm gonna show you what God said. I wanna I want see if this resonates with your spirit. Let me get Deuteronomy 28 and 15. This is the book of Deuteronomy. <laughs> this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Get up. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, then all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All right, so are you familiar with Moses? Okay, so Moses, he led the Israelites out of Egypt. They were in slavery in Egypt. That's why God said, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. So this is after that happened. So God is telling the Israelites, if you don't keep my commandments, all of these curses are going to come upon you and overtake you. Now, is a curse a good thing or a bad thing? I already knew you was gonna say that, but it depends on how you look at it, bro. No, in no way, shape, or form is a curse a good thing, man. Right? A curse is not a good thing, especially when you look at it from a biblical perspective, right? So he said these curses are gonna come upon you and overtake you. Read the very next curse. We'll see if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, right. and cursed shalt thou be in the field. He said you're gonna be cursed in the cities and cursed in the field. Now, curses are just bad things. So let's look at all the bad things that happen to black, Hispanic, and Native Indians in the cities. I'm talking about, man, you, you, you put to one part of the city called the projects or section eight, you got redlining, gentrification happening in your communities, right? You got gang violence, right? You beefing over a block with your slave master's name on it just for wearing a different color, right? Then you got our women out here, man. Don't even get me started on our sisters, right? He also said you're gonna be cursed in the fields though. Cursed in the fields. Now who, what people were in the fields being cursed? Who had bad things happen to them out in the fields, right? We were out in the fields, but our ancestors were out in the fields. Not that long ago. Even in the work field today, man, we're the last hired and the first fired, right? But I'm gonna give you just one more curse because there's over 40. The Lord put 40, over 40 curses on the Israelites for them disobeying his commandments, brother. This is the main curse, so that's why it's the last one that God listed. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. What? Egypt, Egypt again. again. So the Lord said, I'm gonna bring you into Egypt again. What were the Israelites doing in Egypt? You remember? What were the Israelites doing in Egypt? All right, so read that. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter five and verse six. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out I mean, from the house of bondage. Out of what? From the house of bondage. So they were in bondage in Egypt. The Lord called Egypt the house of bondage, right? So read that again. This is the last verse I'm reading. I know you gotta go, brother. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So the house of bondage for slavery again with ships. With what? With, with ships. ships. How did we get to America? Hey, so who is God talking to right here? He's talking to the Israelites, but who would the Israelites be today if he said that the Israelites were gonna go into slavery on ships? African Americans, brother, right? Finish that. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. He said, you're not gonna see your homeland again, right? After you go into slavery on ships, you're not seeing your land again, right? And there. You shall be sold unto your enemies. Unto who? Unto your, your enemies. enemies. Were we not sold once our ancestors got off them slave ships? Put on auction blocks? Had to go from plantation to plantation? $50. Imagine that. $5 for the little girl. Right? That's, that's really what was going on. Right? And that happened to the Israelites. Or prophesied to happen to the Israelites. And it came to pass. Just... Because our oppressor put the names on us 
but that was one of the curses that God said was going to happen to the Israelites for the breaking of his commandments. He said, I'm going to send you into a land you never knew before. With ships, you're going to serve your enemies and be sold, and you're going to be called other names. That's Deuteronomy 28, 37. That's Hosea chapter 1 and verse 11, right? That's Jeremiah 17 and 4. So we got to understand that we're not Negroes, niggas, African American, black, none of that. We are the Israelites of the Bible. We're from Israel, right? So we got to understand too that America is about to get destroyed. The Lord is raising up Russia, China, Brazil, Saudi Arabia, the BRICS, all of these different leagues to come together against America for his purpose, for the Lord's purpose, because of what they've done to his chosen people, God's chosen people, right? Look at all the bloodshed. Man, imagine. They thought that they were just killing niggas that were swinging on trees. That's what they said. All the time they enslaved, captured, and murdered, and genocided God's chosen people, right? Have been oppressing them for four or five hundred years. So God, he's set up a judgment for them in which America is going to get destroyed and wiped off the face of the earth. And if our people that are in this land, if they don't repent, they're going to get caught up in that fire and that judgment too. Right. Right. So that's why the Lord, he's raised up brothers like us all over America, all over the world to tell our people we got to repent because judgment is here. Right. Just today. We were talking about it before you came up, man, a thousand, a thousand plus people, the death toll still isn't stopped, but over a thousand people just died in an earthquake over there in Morocco. But just because it's not happening in America, we don't care. It's not here. But the Lord is judging this earth because the earth knows who we are, man. America is going to be the last place that's really touched. That's really touched because America is the main, the main person, the main people that's done damage to his people, man. And like the Lord said, touching my children is like touching the apple of my knot. He's meaning like, you mess with them, you messing with me. But guess what? The reason that it happened in the first place is because we didn't want to serve our God. We wanted to serve these other gods, these nations, because it, it's crazy. We aren't the only people that use the Bible, right? The white man, he used the Bible too. But that's really it. The Chinese man, they don't really use the Bible. They worship their gods. The, the Arabs, they worship Allah, right? The, the damn, uh, the Africans, they have pantheons. They worship all type of gods, right? But the white man, he took what belongs to a group of people, the Israelites, and he tried to apply it to everybody when they, they themselves don't even believe what's in the Bible. They don't care about the Bible, it's not for them. Christ said out of his own mouth in Matthew 15 and 24 that he was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? But I know y'all gotta go. Last thing I want, uh, I'll ask is to let the brother just plug you in with our YouTube, right? Just plug, plug in with the YouTube real quick and then y'all can be on the way, man, right? Who, who you just said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, that's a, uh, is that, that's a, uh, man, Demon Slayer? Yeah. <laughs> oh no, man! Look, man! Look, man! Hey, we definitely got our chosen people, man. We special, bro. We we we. <laughs> we'll rock anything, man. You know. But uh, kind. But you got any questions, brother? No question at this time. I think I had something come up with it and as we continue to go, I just cleared my mind as we got into the world. Well, I'm going to get one more scripture and I'm going to close it out. Let me get, what did you say, brother? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Because we got power, bro. Like, we really got power. That's right. 82 and 6, yeah. Yeah, we, we really got power, man. That's right. But we're going to be powerless if we don't tap into our power source. That's right. Right? Our power source is the one true God, Yahweh, man. And he's given us power to be gods. But if we don't plug in and charge up through these scriptures, the word, then we're going to be powerless. You know what I'm saying? That's why the Lord said, what good is a light that's hidden under a bushel, man? Right. So we got to plug in with the source so that our light can shine bright. Right, go ahead. I'm going to start from the top and jump down. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 82, from the top. God standing in the congregation of the mighty. He judged among the gods. Right. Verse, it's like it. Verse 6, I have said, ye are gods. Ye are gods. Hey, the Lord said, you are gods. Go ahead. And all of you are children of the Most High. All right, so we the children of the Most High. Israel, 
Yashua'ala, like the brother said, right? That means prince of power with God, right? So we are the sons of God and we have power to be gods upon this earth, meaning the rulers, the divine ones, the powers of this earth. That's right. But again, we're waiting on that, on that power to be literally just put in us all the way because Christ said what? To him that overcometh, I'm gonna give him power over the nations, right? So we're waiting on him to come back so we can receive that power, right? Hey, and then we're gonna really be gods on this earth. Right. Off, like, like, hey, well, hey, for real. For real, God. You, you, you see Hancock that movie? That's right. Hey, hey, see, see, Hancock was a superhero in, in folly, man. He, he was drunk, you know what I'm saying, man? A drunkard, man, really an adulterer and everything, man. But he, he was tearing everything up, man. So imagine having those superpowers, but in righteousness, man. That's it's gonna right. be seven times that. That's right. Right. But yeah, let me get that First Corinthians. This is the book of First Corinthians, chapter 15 and 57. Bring it up. But thanks be to Yahweh, which giveth us the victory through our Lord, Amashiach Yahweh Shai. Yeah, so it doesn't matter what you go through in this land, man, because always having that thought that I'm going to get the last left. They can't do anything to me. That's why Christ said, fear not him that can kill the flesh, but rather fear him that can kill both uh, soul and body in hell, right? So we don't fear what man can do. We've already received the victory through our Lord. Yahweh was shot. We've already got the W. That's right. We're just, wait, we just waiting on it. That's, That's right. right. Go ahead. Verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Right. Our labor is not in vain. So that's why the Lord said, be steadfast, be unmovable, and keep on working, man. Because you're going to get that victory, man. Right. You just keep pushing, you overcome, get that dub, receive that power to be a king, a priest, a god on this earth, man. Right? right? But with them, I'm calling and say, call me a Call me a Call me a Call me a Death to America. Death to America. Inshallah, one.